Private and Local Order of the Day Number 1. Christian Church's New Zealand Property Trust Board Empowering Bill, third reading. Mr Speaker, I call Alfred Naro. Mr Speaker, I move that the Christian Church's New Zealand Property Trust Board Empowering Bill uh, be now read a third time. Mr uh, Speaker, um, can I first of all just acknowledge uh, the sale and supply of alcohol exemption for Royal New Zealand RSA clubs from special licensing requirements for Anzac Day Amendment Bill and to my friend and colleague uh, Paul Foster Bell, um, which I think is a bill that has uh, obviously had wide support and congratulate him on getting it through. It is a rare thing, as, as, as I've been told, um, and as a member of the Tatatū RSA and the RSAs uh, out in the West Auckland, I know that they too will salute uh, this bill. Uh, which is really important, so I acknowledge uh, the fine work that he's done as well. Uh, and in that, um, the bill actually relates to uh, the bill that I'll be speaking on, the Christian Church's New Zealand Property Trust Board Empowering Bill, in regards that the bill around the sale and supply of alcohol uh, talks about legacy uh, of service and sacrifice of those who served for their country. Um, the bill that uh, I will be speaking on behalf of the Minister, uh, the Minister Honourable Nick Smith, um, is a private member's bill that he brought uh, to this House. And uh, I give apologies from the Minister who can't be here uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, I, my speech well, won't be long, but it will cover the essentials in which uh, he's requested that I cover to acknowledge those who've been part of uh, this bill bringing to, to the House uh, and the intention behind it, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, the uh, Christian Churches uh, New Zealand uh, is an association of more than 30 churches uh, this began uh, some time in Nelson in 1844, and the Christian Churches movement began in the early 1800s, uh, both in the UK uh, and the US, and uh, out of a concern that more uh, traditional churches were too rigid and authoritarian. And it was at that stage that uh, those churches at that time felt that it was important that they should uh, congregate together uh, to have churches that were more accessible, um, and also too, I suppose, in a way that met uh, some of the needs that were more sort of community uh, and more communal orientated, and hence was the reason uh, for the forming of these uh, Christian churches as well. Their focus uh, was on unity and the teachings of the New Testament. Um, so in a sense, the, the church grew rapidly in New Zealand and new congregations were formed in Auckland in 1845, uh, in Dunedin in 1858, and in Christchurch in 1870. Uh, and by 1885, they had grown to 25 churches across the country. Um, Mr Speaker, I do beg your indulgence that uh, the Minister is quite clear that he'd like to acknowledge, I suppose, some of the foundational aspects of this bill and those that have been involved, uh, and so I'll be talking just a little bit about that uh, as well. Uh, initially, uh, each of the church properties were vested in uh, uh, each autonomous congregation in the name of the church elders, and this was not entirely practical, and in the 1920s, the Conference of Churches decided to have a legal entity that could own all uh, of those properties. In April uh, 1924, uh, at a convened conference of delegates uh, from the churches, a board of trustees of certain members of the church was also set up with the intent that the board should not hold as trustees the land of those churches that wish to vest the land and their properties in the board and also real and personal property for church extension purposes. And in that sense, uh, Mr Speaker, what also too has come out of those uh, founding members and those who've been actively involved in those 30 congregations was to actually have more of an outreach focus. So not only was it to be unified, but uh, in a sense, the uh, ramifications and the confinements of the trust as it was constituted only allowed them to deal with properties. And yet, uh, we know that a lot of the work uh, in these churches was not just about properties, but it was the outreach ministries that they have. It could have been everything from uh, not just the Sunday schools that they delivered on Sundays uh, and the church services, but often these churches have other social services that are involved, uh, be it like budgeting services they may have, kindergartens, um, which are called after-school programs that run with a, an Oscar potential, an Oscar contract. These are a number of services that are being run by these churches and by these congregations. So the intent then was to be able to give them more flexibility to broaden their reach and the scope uh, of their ability to be able to make a difference in uh, those communities uh, in particular, uh, Mr Speaker. The legal entity was incorporated as the Church Extension and Property Trust Board of Associated Churches of Christ uh, in New Zealand. 
Uh, there were some doubts uh, then about the legal capacity of the board to hold uh, these properties vested within it. So the Private Act uh, was passed by this parliament in 1929. The reason for this bill is that the Associated Churches of Christ uh, Church Property Act of 1929, which governs the management of these church properties, is outdated and needs modernising. Uh, and as I was explaining, uh, Mr. Speaker, a number of these churches have actually talked, and I've uh, talked to some of them about uh, their activities um, that were important in order for them to be able to, I suppose, demonstrate their relevance uh, to their local communities, and hence the reason why this becomes an important part uh, of the evolution and change as a church uh, to become more relevant uh, to the needs that they face uh, within their congregations as well. So, uh, Mr Speaker, this bill repeals the Associated Churches of Christ uh, Church Property Act, uh, which dates back to uh, 1929. Uh, the core of the changes proposed in this legislation is to enable uh, the new trust uh, that those 44 churches have agreed uh, to establish to have a more modern uh, governance structure uh, and to be able to manage uh, their church properties in a more flexible way. I also too want to reiterate, because some of the churches uh, were unsure about uh, different matters uh, not affected by, or matters that may be affected by this change. So I just want to again, uh, to the members uh, of those 44 churches that may be listening, uh, just to reassure them uh, that, for instance, the matters not affected by transfer of property rights and obligations, the bill provides that the dissolution of the old board and the transfer of its property rights and obligations to the new board are not to be treated as placing a person in breach of or default under any contract or in breach of trust, or in breach of confidence, or as otherwise, making the person guilty of a civil wrong, and are not to be treated as entitling a person to a terminate or cancel or modify a contract, an agreement, or an arrangement, or b enforce or accelerate the performance of an obligation, or c require the performance of an obligation not otherwise arising for performance, and do not realise uh, any surety wholly or in part from all or any obligation, and do not invalidate or discharge any contract or security. Um, and these were, were issues that I know that were raised uh, of some concern, and so I hope that by clarifying these in my speech, uh, it will give um, some clarity and confirmation to those that will seek it. Um, the other thing, too, is the dissolution of the old board. I think that's important. Um, the bill provides that uh, on the commencement, the old board is dissolved, and the register of incorporated societies uh, must, as soon as practicable after commencement, remove the name of the register of charitable trusts kept under part two of the Charitable Trust Act 1957. I just want to just and then uh, finalise this part of my speech, uh, again, to give some clarity uh, to those members uh, that are listening. Um, the portion where it talks about the records and registers, uh, the bill provides that neither the Register General of Land nor any other person charged with the keeping of records or registered is obliged solely by reason of part two of the bill to change any name in those records or registers or in any document. The bill also provides that in the absence of evidence to the contrary, an instrument, whether or not it is an instrument of transfer, is sufficient uh, proof when presented to the Register General uh, of Land or any other person charged with the keeping of any records or registers uh, that any property rights or obligations have under this bill become the property rights or obligations of the new board if the following requirements are met. A, their instrument has been or purports to have been executed by the new board and the property rights or obligations in question were the property rights or obligations of the old board immediately before the commencement uh, of this act. Um, Mr Speaker, I do hope, I know that that was a little bit tedious, but uh, again, just to give clarity and confirmation uh, to, the, to the 44 churches and members that may be listening uh, out there, I uh, then just want to conclude uh, my speech uh, first of all, uh, Mr Speaker, that um, I would note that probably the most significant change in this bill uh, from the 1929 Act is that the Act uh, put quite a narrow constraint on the Property Trust Board to be able to spend the funds and the revenues of those properties uh, only back on property and the view that 44 parishes have today the ability to be able to exercise their outreach ability uh, into their communities. Can I uh, finally, uh, first of all, just acknowledge um, uh, the Honourable Ruth Dyson, uh, who's the chairperson of the committee, and also to the deputy chair, uh, Sarah Dowie, 
uh, and also to all the members uh, that are in the uh, Government Administration Committee for their work on this bill. I would also like to acknowledge the new Trust Solicitor, Mr Vestris uh, Altmans, for his work in bringing this bill uh, to the House. Uh, this bill is simply about letting those uh, 44 churches to have a more flexible manage, ability to manage their own property and commend uh, this bill uh, to the House. Yeah, yeah.